We're going to be looking at some advanced uh, 3D modeling and construction tools in SolidWorks. And we're going to be creating a uh, hairdryer uh, assembly. So to get started, we'll create a new sketch. We're in inches right now. So I'm going to create a new sketch on the XY or front plane. From here, we're going to draw a circle in the origin. And we don't care about the dimension right now. We do want to draw three lines that intersect with this outside here. I'm just going to hover over that edge, make sure that it's horizontal, vertical, and again, it intersects with that edge. To get the shape I want, which is this inside cutoff rectangle, I'm going to use Power Trim. Under Trim Entities, we're going to click Power Trim, and then we're just going to slide across this outside edge here, and that should give us our, uh, our contour that we're looking for. We'll close that dialog, and we're going to start dimensioning out our part now. We would like the height of this to be 1.5, and the radius of this circle here is going to be two. And we'd like a fillet on that top corner. So we're just going to create a small fillet from here to here. And that fillet is going to be a radius of 0.25. That should be the majority of the geometry for this part. We do want this corner to be coincident with the origin. You can drag and snap that in there. Once you've finalized your part, we'll revolve this uh, around the Y axis. So we can exit our sketch and then click Features and we'll create a revolved boss base. It's looking for our axis of revolution. And we'll zoom out so you can see what's going on. This is a blind 360 degree revolve. And we'll hit OK. That should create the base profile for our, um, our first part. We're now going to create a few reference planes to make some lofts and sweeps. And that's why we've centered our part right in here in the in the origin. So all of our planes intersect the center of this part. To get started, we're going to create a few reference geometries off of the front plane. So we'll head over to reference geometry. We're going to create a plane. And we're going to use the front plane. And we'll create an offset of 2.5. So in the distance, creating an offset of 2.5. And we can see that the plane has now moved two and a half inches off of the part. We're also going to create a few more reference planes. And see how it shows up in your manager. We'll click reference geometry. We'll create another plane. And then we're going to create this one also off of the front plane and continue to enter our distances. We'll have one that's 3.5 and 4.25 inches away. That should give us all of the reference planes that we need. And now we can start creating 2D sketches on any of these planes if we'd like. We're going to start with the front plane and we're going to project the uh, origin inside of that plane. And then we'll draw our sketch. So I'm going to select the front plane to make sure that's what I'm drawing my sketch on. Go to my sketch menu and click sketch. 
I can always right click and select normal too. And if you don't like seeing all of the planes, again, you can always right click and hide all of the extra planes. We're going to draw a rectangle that's half an inch by one and a half inches from that origin. And from here, I'm going to fill it the top two edges with a radius of 0.25. Now I'll click check. That completes that profile sketch. We're going to exit this sketch. And we can see that that sketch exists within this part. And I'm going to create a wireframe view so I can see my part a little bit better. So now I can see my sketch within here. I'm going to show my next plane and I'm going to start a new sketch on this plane. I'm going to draw a rectangle and I'm going to make sure it's coincident to that other point here. And I don't want it to select the same dimensions so i'm just going to purposefully offset it and then i'll go to my smart dimension i would like this height to be 0.5 still but i want this dimension to be a tenth less so that's 1.4 i'm going to fill it these corners in the same fashion and check and that's fully defined. I'm going to do this two more times and adjust the values. That completes all of my profile sketches across the planes. And we're going to loft this and put all of these profiles together. We'll go to our features and we'll select lofted boss base. And it's asking for our profiles. I'm going to select this one first. So if one is already selected, just clear your selection by right clicking. So the best way to do this is selecting this bottom corner because that's where we coincidented all of our sketches. So see how that comes out nice and clean. Once these are selected, you can hit the check and it's now created the handle of our part based on those lofts. We can hide our planes and that gives us a nice handle for our housing for our blow dryer. We're going to use the right plane now to create the next segment. If you need to you can show that right plane so that we can select it. And we're going to create a sketch and we'll create a line and center point arc. So we'll select a sketch. I'm going to go normal 2 and off of that origin I'm going to create a line and I will create a center point arc. Let's make sure you find the midpoint and select. That should give you a nice arc off of your line. We want the radius of that arc to be 0.75. We want the distance from the midpoint to the origin to be 1.125. And that should place our arc. 
We're going to create an extruded boss from here. That's 5.5 uh, inches in length. We'll exit our sketch, go to our feature menu, extrude, and we're going to take that extrusion and we need to go in the opposite direction. So click the reverse direction, enter 5.5, and make sure that merge result is checked. And that should finish that part. Now's a good time to look at your part in the normal shaded with edges view. And you can see the majority of our uh, part is complete. We're gonna quickly fillet some of the hard edges and we'll do this as a 3D fillet. So go over to your fillet command and we're going to select this inside edge here. We're going to select this inside edge here and this outer uh, loft here. So make sure you get just this outside edge. You may need to just select those particular edges. We're going to enter 0.15 as our radius. And then Make sure your profile is circular and hit OK. And you should get some clean radiuses on these parts. The next step is to shell the inside of our model so we can fit all of the parts to the blow dryer, the fan, and the electronics. We're going to use the shell command. We'll flip our part over. And we're going to select this surface and this end surface here. We want a wall thickness of 1 eighth of an inch. So we'll enter that in this area here. And we'll make sure nothing else is checked. Hit OK. And that should shell your part out with a wall of 0.125. I'm going to turn off my right plane so you can see the part. Our next step is to create all of the vents for our blow dryer. And in order to do that, we'll create a linear pattern. And then we'll repeat that over the geometry. All right, we'll select this face here and then the toolbar that pops up, click normal too. From here, we're going to create a rectangle that's going to be patterned over this face. So in your sketch menu, click sketch and it should already be selected to this face. We're going to create a two point rectangle over here in space and then we're going to smart dimension this. We want this outside corner to be our reference to the origin. So the linear distance is going to be 1.17. And the same corner here to here, that distance is going to be 1.45. And the rectangle is half an inch by eighth of an inch. That should define that particular uh, sketch and now we can go to an extruded cut with a distance of 0.13. So exit the sketch, select your feature, go to extruded cut, your part should be selected and we want this distance to be 0.13 only. It will be a blind into the part and, and this cut should barely nick that corner and we'll check it. Now we're going to take that and build a pattern off of that cut. We're going to start by creating an axis. And we're going to use this axis between two planes. 
And those two planes are going to be the top and right plane. So you can go to your top and right plane. And then that should create an axis for us to pattern around. Hit OK. Okay. Once we've created our axis, we're going to create a linear plat pattern. To get started for our first direction, we're going to select this edge. We know it's perpendicular to the part. Uh, we want that spacing from the edge in this direction to be 0.6 inches, and we'll have five of those cuts patterned across the horizontal or the x direction. For the other direction, we're going to select our axis. And that ensures that we have a perpendicular axis. We want those to be a quarter inch apart, and we want 10 of them in that direction. Where it says features, we want to make sure that we select that whole cut extrude. If your pattern falls off your part like this, it just means one of your directions is off. So you can flip your axes one way or the other and make sure it puts your pattern on the right spot. Once it looks correct, just hit OK. And that should create the grill to your uh, blow dryer casing. Now we're going to create a sweep feature along this part so that we could put these two pieces together as if they were molded frames. So to get started, we're going to draw a really simple rectangle on this front face here. So I'll select this face first. I'll go to sketch. Make sure that I'm normal too. And I'm just gonna draw an eighth by eighth rectangle. I'm gonna zoom in and I'm actually gonna make sure I am very careful where I place this. I do want it to be along this axis or that edge. So you can actually make sure you select that midpoint and then move your part, smart dimension it. I know I want this height to be 0.125 and I also want the length to be 0.125. I should fully define that rectangle and now we're going to sweep it along. And this gets pretty tricky depending on how tight your tolerances are in your radius. Make sure that you exit your sketch and press escape so that you don't have your sketch selected. We're going to select features and go to swept cut. Now we want to make sure we select the right geometry for this particular part. So we're going to select it from the design tree. So pull that up and click sketch eight. For the path here, the profile path, it's looking for some distance. We can start by selecting this edge and see how it continues through here. We need it to go around the entire part. So clear your selection if you selected an edge. You can right click and select Selection Manager, where it says Select Group. Select one of your edges, and then make sure you get this tangent. Once we select that, it should go around your whole entire part. We'll ch check and make sure that everything lines up properly. It should preview your cut, and you should have a nice selection around your whole entire part. Hit OK to double check your swept cut and you should have something that looks just like that. Don't forget to save your part. Since this could potentially be a product, this is a good time to show some model views of this. So we're gonna use photo view and create some scenes. So if you go to your add-ins under the toolbar, uh, tools, add-ins, 
Look for Photo View 360 and click OK. You should get a render tools. And from here, we'll uh, add an appearance. So in the display manager, there shouldn't be any appearances as of yet. So if you look, there's no appearances for this particular model. So under appearances, we'll select plastic and we'll select high gloss. Well, you can pick a color. Let's double click blue and it should appear for the entire part. We can now add a scene. If we drop down the scene tab, we'll go to basic scenes and let's double click uh, the plain white uh, for three point faded. Here you can drag it into your uh, graphics. And then underneath your render tools, you can select the options. And here you can play with a lot of different things like rotating the, the part, making sure you get the view you like. You can change the size of the image. Uh, the output format, all kinds of great stuff. But for now, we'll just check the defaults and it should allow us to do a final render. Since we haven't added a camera, it asks us to do that. Uh, we're not going to do that right now, but we will add a, like, uh, we can do that later. We'll just do it without adding the camera perspective. We have some really beautiful renderings um, right off the bat. So you can save that part or save the image once you're done. Just click Save Image, and then wherever you're saving your documents.